Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's TV One's reality show dating show, The One, episode six and seven. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and you make sure to leave your questions and comments down below and limited commercials to not ruin your flow. Kirk and Tammy bring some breakfast treats as today is the last set of dates, eliminations, and then everyone moves into the one mansion. Brent says to production that he trusts Ashley's decision and judgment, but he has a feeling he let a good one go with Ashley. He wants to make sure that this go round the selection will be assertive. Ashley is ready and her selections are based on character and maturity. Kirk speaks with Brent alone and uses the analogy concerning fruit. He asks Brent, what is your favorite fruit out of this selection? And Brent says grapes. Kirk says that you may love grapes and you may also like these other fruits, but over time, Brent, you might just have to just get the grapes and nothing else. He may like all the other fruit, but must practice focusing more on what he loves the most. Kirk even jokes that Brent can leave his ties before leaving because he just dropped a lesson, a very important wood. <laughs> Brent reflects on the conversation and realizes that he needs to focus more on what he wants specifically. It's very important to make the best decision. It's another date with Brent with some aerial aerobatics. He wants his future lady to be open-minded when it comes to trying new things. Jasmine's first impression of Brent is that he's very attractive and seems very fun. She even likes his salt and pepper hair. Leah joins the group and Brent notices that she's a bit younger, but that's okay. Brent says to production she's younger, but she came in with a nice smile and so far so good. Leah also loves his curly salt and pepper hair and she wants to run her fingers through it. Jasmine is a little worried about this activity as her upper body strength isn't too great. She gives it a try but can't hold herself up. Leah gives it a shot and everyone agrees that it's much easier than it looks. Leah says to production that Jasmine is amazing but feels that she would be a better match for Brent. They have a quick conversation and the ladies are only one year apart in age. What's interesting is that Jasmine just got out of a relationship only two months ago. Brent is shocked about how quickly she's moved on and that she's even on the show, but she feels that she's ready. Leah expresses that she's learned from her past relationships that she should be more considerate and is ready to get to know Brent more. Ashley is ready for her date and Vaughn joins her for an activity of art and she's smitten by his muscles. Ashley says to production that she can't help but to notice his arms, chest, shoulders, and whatever the muscles are called on top of the shoulders. It all looks good. She even says that I forgot his name because he was so cute. Before she can get lost in Vaughn, Matthew arrives. Ashley says to production that Matthew is a little shorter than me, but I can tell he still has a nice body. She doesn't know what he's about, but instantly she's attracted to him. After they learn the art is body painting, Matthew is ready and willing to get started. Ashley isn't disappointed either, as the fellas look really nice. Vaughn takes the lead with questions, as Matthew is a little more quiet. Ashley isn't sure if he's shy or just being respectful and letting Vaughn speak first. Vaughn expresses that he doesn't look for love and make a list of requirements as it comes to meeting certain expectations. What if that person doesn't check off everything on the list? It doesn't make sense. The best thing to do is just let love flow and let people get to know one another over time. Vaughn says to production that I don't compete with other men. All I can do is be me. It's up to someone else if they like who I am as a person. Matthew wants someone who's God-fearing and honest. Everything else will fall into place afterwards. Matthew says to production that we're body painting and it's great to show off your assets, but my greatest assets are my smile and my mind. Now Ashley wants to paint the guys. Matthew is the first to get some paint and he loves to read, listen to music, and listen to poetry. Ashley says to production, I know I appear to be a good girl, but behind closed doors with my man, I'm someone different. It's been a while since she's seen a man naked in person and even admits to a little adult media. She's trying not to show the fellas how much she's enjoying the moment, but has to end the date. Later is the nightcap. 
Ashley blushes when she talks about her date and she got a little happy with the body painting. And the guys had some awesome bodies. Brent shares his concern as Jasmine just got out of a relationship two months ago. The nightcap will show a little bit more of everyone's personality. This evening, they will listen to a sexologist who will educate everyone about aphrodisiac foods that awaken the senses and create arousal. The first exercise is seduction techniques with champagne. Matthew pours the drinks for Ashley and Vaughn, but Vaughn and Matthew don't drink. Ashley seems aggravated that both men don't drink, but Matthew says that he will participate and toast with her. Unfortunately, Ashley doesn't seem impressed by that gesture either. Oysters are next for the exercise, but Brent is allergic and Vaughn doesn't want to try it. oysters. Instead, Jasmine and Leah indulge and Matthew feeds Ashley. He wants to keep the party going and gives them a try as well. He didn't like the taste too much, but it was worth a try. Vaughn's attitude gets a little disturbing as he wants some real food. He doesn't want this stuff he's never heard of. Everything just looks like a bowel movement ready to happen. Leah even takes note of the bad vibes coming from across the room. Now everyone is insulted by his mood and Brent is insulted now. Brent says to production that this isn't your grandma's house, this isn't Thanksgiving. If you're not open-minded to try new things, then why are you here? Take your country book somewhere else with that. Vaughn says to production that I love food, but certain things tonight don't look good to me. Vaughn continues with complaints. There ain't no meat on the table. Brent even says under his breath, where did they get these two? Ashley even heard it loud and clear and gives Brent's group the side eye. The next exercise is seduction with some finger licking. But Vaughn doesn't want to do that either, but gives a half effort lick. Brent's couch again laughs at the events and Ashley says they're doing a little too much laughing over there. But they're all sure that it's all good. It's not that serious, we're just watching. Now it's Matthew's turn and he's not shy to seduce Ashley's finger and all the ladies in the room are impressed. Leah shows some skills and Brent enjoys every moment. Jasmine won't be shown up and she impresses Brent as well. Now it's time for some one-on-one -on -one sessions. Brent speaks with Leah first. Leah was raised by her dad and siblings. Her mother unfortunately wasn't in the picture when it came to raising her. She's very close with her father. Her sister and brother-in-law gave her good insights on true love and marriage. When he speaks with Jasmine, she does clarify that she's no longer with her ex and they don't talk anymore. But if true love persists, then things will come back full circle. Brent has concerns with both women. Ashley says to production that yeah, Vaughn has all these muscles and looks great, but hopefully he doesn't think that that's all he has to bring to the table. She wants to know from him. I noticed that you don't drink. I mean, tonight, why aren't you drinking? He says that his dad and uncle were heavy drinkers when he was growing up and that caused liver complications. He chooses not to drink because it's not beneficial to him. He wants to live a long and healthy life. Now Ashley is more open and his response was very transparent. Before they can get any deeper into conversation, now Matthew politely requests some one-on-one -on -one time. Matthew explains why he doesn't drink. He feels that it's all about discipline and taking his health and life seriously. He's also celibate. Once again, Ashley is taken back about how these conversations have opened up her eyes more to Vaughn and Matthew. Her judgment was surely off. She has some common things with both men. The Franklins join the room while everyone is excited. They notice that Vaughn seems very serious and quiet. But Vaughn says that I'm an observer. I like to read the room and see everyone. It's not about what you don't say. It's also about behavior. Ashley agrees to this notion as well. She has a lot to think about. Now it's time to get the final thoughts from Brent and Ashley. Brent feels that the dates were very interesting, but Ashley not so much. She feels as if she had to constantly pull information from them and the conversations only got better towards the end of the night. They bring in the guys and she's ready to make a decision. The man who she wants to move into the one mansion is Matthew. Ashley says to production that she felt that Vaughn's mind was somewhere else. Matthew was open, tried new things, and even if it was out of his comfort zone, he was sexy. Now it's time for Brent to make a decision. Both women were smart, funny, and the evening felt good. And it was if he was chilling with some good friends. The woman who he chooses to join him in the one mansion will be Leah. 
Leah now has something to say. She is grateful that she was considered, but feels that there wasn't a connection like she hoped. Therefore, she will have to politely decline the invitation. Everyone is looking for something real and she wants to take the matter seriously. Everyone respects Leah's decision and hugs are given to say goodbye. Brent was shocked and he respects her honesty and for not wasting anyone's time. Leah says to production that Brent's a great guy. I just didn't feel that spark like I'd hoped. Now there's a slight dilemma. Brent only has five selections but needs six for the one mansion. Kirk wants Brent to go back and think and reconsider someone that he would like to bring back. Tammy says that she thinks she knows who it is. I think her name is Ashley. And Brent says, yeah, it is. Ashley left an impression on him and he hopes that she's still interested in joining in the journey. They get Ashley on the phone and Brent is very nervous. So nervous and he can't speak that Kirk takes the phone to help him out and says, hey Ashley, this is Kirk, we want you to come back. Brent formally asks Ashley to return and she says yes. And she's looking forward to seeing him again. It's been an incredible night and the next time everyone will see one another is in the one mansion. And that is the end of the episode. Stay tuned for episode seven. Brent and Ashley arrive to the one mansion and the estate is nothing short to amazing. Kirk and Tammy arrive and Ashley is super excited to stay there along with her six men. As they have a brief tour, it's hard to believe that this is where they'll be staying during the entire process. Brent says more women, more problems, but bring on the problems. Everyone can't help but to notice that Ashley is super excited and bubbly. Tammy knows why she's excited. Women rarely get to have this experience in society without judgment, dating multiple men and being in control. It's a new freedom she's excited about. Kirk says to production he wants to watch Brent's process and how serious he is in finding the one. Brent did express his concerns about if he would be able to be with just one woman. He will have to make a lot of changes since his dating world has opted him to several options. Tammy is so interested to see how all the personalities will blend under one roof. This evening, everyone will meet and greet with cocktails. Everyone has to get dressed to impress. It's all about Ashley and Brent, and they are the centers of attention. They will all need to bring it. Everyone starts to arrive, and as expected, people are dressed to impress. Each person has some trash talk as they converse. Lisa thinks she has no competition. Brian is ready to see Ashley. Richie knows that she's the one. And Steve says that this black Jesus, referring to Brian, isn't a concern. Each person walked into the mansion looking amazing. And Mika is a little blindsided to see Ashley, whom she went on a date with with Brent. She was chosen, so Ashley's presence is confusing. She was eliminated, but she's here? Ashley and Brent welcome everyone to the mansion and encourage one another to have fun. They want everyone to remember that they're all there for a reason and just enjoy the moment. Brent says to production that I can't wait to talk to everyone more. Most of all, observe how the ladies interact, especially with the other guys. This will let him know if they're present for him or someone else. Richie wants to know how he made the selections because the ladies are a bit diverse. Mika also wants to know something because, uh, and she points to Ashley. Brent says that they had a lot in common and they even have on the same color dress and similar shoes. Now Mika is a little irritated. Brent wants to discuss it later, but Mika is adamant. Ashley was eliminated. Brent steps in and clarifies that eliminated, not actually. I feel that I had to pick the best six and I accomplished that task. Mika wants to continue this debate, but it's obvious that Brent wants to move on as Ashley is present, whether Mika likes it or not. In the kitchen, there's gourmet cuisines and Shavar brags that he's an amazing cook and can make whatever Ashley desires. Brian chimes in and says that he may be a cook, but I'm a chef, which gives the room a little ooh as the men compete. Addie B can't remain quiet in this battle as he says that he makes meals from the homeland Nigeria. They can travel there to experience it all. Ashley wants to know how the men deal with anger. Matthew says that he can attest to it all. He's even gotten in trouble for bad behavior. He's a new person that everyone sees today. He's sure that all the fellows can agree that everyone 
wants to master being their true, genuine self. I am emotionally intelligent. Steve backs it up saying, please say it again for the people. Emotionally intelligent is so important. Matthew knows that his growth is due to the glory of God. Addie B even had a moment where he reacted out of anger. Man, the dumbest thing I ever did was talk back to a cop. I was pulled over for no reason and I was angry. And that could have been a very dangerous situation. And the room agrees. Steve adds that as a man, when our egos are challenged, we can react quickly. It takes discipline to control and assess the anger. Dante agrees with everyone. These conversations are necessary, especially for black men in America. Also, anyone can look back at a situation and say, uh, I could have handled that much better. I have two older sisters and I know with black women who have it together, you gotta come correct. Tammy and Kirk join in and want to ask Ashley what's one word to describe each guy. She describes everyone and when she gets to Steve, she says, friend. And Steve jokes, oh no, I'm in the friend zone? <laughs> Give me a hug, man. Everyone laughs and Ashley tries to clarify, no, it's a good thing because he's sincere. Tammy agrees, that's not a bad thing at all. Brent and the ladies toast to finding the one and Ashley can tell Mika is upset that she's there, although it is what it is and and Brent made a decision to ask her to return. Now the ladies turn up the heat with some questions. Um, we want to know, Brent, why are you being serious now? He feels that it's the perfect time, and why not now? He's been married before, he's been in broken relationships, he's healed from everything. He's only getting older, and serious decisions about my life must be changed and must be made. Plus, my parents want to see some grandkids, and I want some children of my own. Brent says to production that with all the good vibes going on, it's sad to know that one of these ladies will be going home tomorrow. Brent and the ladies sit down, and Tammy and Kirk join the tail end of a conversation concerning sex. Richie and Lisa believe that sex should be something you talk about during the first date, and sex is healthy. Lisa explains that sex is one of the leading reasons why people get divorced, and women don't vocalize their concerns as much as they should, as the opposite sex. One person could want sex all the time, while the other one doesn't. Some agree, and Kirk tells Brent, I would not want to be in your shoes right now because everyone has such amazing points of views. Tammy says to production that this evening is great because everyone is placing their best foot forward. And over time, more personalities will come through. I can't wait to see what happens. Steve brings up another debate topic in the kitchen. What made the men decide that now was the time to change in their lives and start that journey in finding the one? Matthew holds back tears to share that two days before he met everyone in this process, he lost a very close friend of his. His friend did not get to accomplish the things in life that he was destined for. He came from this prestigious family, he was smart, and Matthew can't even finish his sentence and is overwhelmed just thinking of his friend. Everyone in the room says it's okay and they consoled him and encouraged him to take their time. It's okay bro, let it out. Matthew says to production that whatever you want to do in life, tomorrow isn't promised. Things that you want to do, things that you want to be or go, just go for it. He continues in the group, my friend had an opportunity of a lifetime and he lost it running out here in these streets. Ashley asks Matthew if he's okay and if he's all right with having some one-on-one -on -one time to talk. He's fine at taking a breather. Mika can't contain her thoughts any longer. She requests to speak with Brent alone. Brent says to production that he's okay with a woman taking some control and feels fine with speaking with her. Mika says that the conversation is difficult, but she has some things on her mind that she wants to talk about. She wants to know why Ashley is there. He's taken back by the topic and says to production that the conversation is about Ashley? I'm confused. I thought we were gonna talk about us. She's confused. I run the rock climbing challenge and the one-on-one -on -one time and Ashley got the one-on-one -on -one time as well. Ashley got eliminated, but she's here. It's not fair, but I didn't say anything. I just want to know what's the deal. Brent asked, would you eliminate someone just because they didn't win a physical competition? And Mika says no. And Brent is very kind when explaining everything because he knows the matter is serious to Mika. He brought Ashley back because he felt that there was a connection with both of them. 
Mika says to production that I'm glad we had a chance to talk and he explained himself well. I feel like I got clarity and I got everything that I needed. I'm ready to move forward. Matthew is thankful that Ashley took a moment to make sure that he was okay after sharing such a heartfelt experience. She knows that it's important to make sure the people that we care for are heard and supported. He now encourages her to share something with him as he would love to be an outlet of expression and consoling. She shares that when she was younger, she was so angry with her father. He was an alcoholic, and she was that girl that would always be in fights. Her anger would always get the best of her. Matthew now feels at home with Ashley, and they laugh along with blushing. He's happy. She displays she actually cares, and he cares about her too. He gifts her with a bracelet that his mom gave him that reads, Pray Through It All. He even asks if he can get a kiss before they go back inside, and she agrees. Okay, maybe a little peck, but it then turns into several kisses. Ashley says to production, um, I kissed someone, and I told myself I wasn't going to do that, but... You know what? It felt right. I'm an adult. Who cares? Now Brent sits down with Ashley and she kindly requests some clarification as well. She understands the process is very quick and he had to make a decision. She respects it all. Brent apologizes to her and loved how she handled the situation with grace. He sees everything. She does express she's happy that he called her back and she's happy that she's in the mansion with him. She feels that he always had great insights during conversations. Most importantly, he's handsome and they have a lot in common. Now the important topic. Britt wants to know, how does her son feel about his mom going through this process? She had a discussion with her son who's 15 and he was open in wanting mom to be happy because he's leaving for college soon anyway. She wants to build a life with that special someone. Brent asks for hugs and everything is on the right page. Ashley remembers and tells him that your love language is physical touch. And he's happy that she remembered that detail. And he whispers, don't forget it. Ashley says to production, she made sure to show physical contact with a good hug and a soft kiss. She looks forward to sharing more moments like that with him. Brent knows more than ever that he's got some real thinking to do. Tammy and Kirk applaud everyone for having fun and engaging, but gives a friendly reminder that tomorrow someone will have to be eliminated. So have fun, take notes, and get ready. It's the first night in the house. The overshot cameras are away, but the production phone cameras give Tammy and Kirk the inside scoop. Ashley gives Matthew a tour of her mansion room and mentions to production that she notices more and more she's into one person, Matthew. She's trying to talk more with other guys, but it's difficult. Jazzy tells Brent that I don't compete with other people and she doesn't like this idea. Brent suggests not to look at this process as a competition, but rather working hard for something that you really want. Brent feels that Jazzy does come off a little closed, but they do have a connection. He doesn't want to speak too soon on who should stay. He should have more of an idea tomorrow. Lisa and Richie invite everyone to play some games. Selected is The Confessional. It's 24 questions that spark conversations. The first question, what is the main reason your last relationship didn't work? Marcus says that he wasn't honest in letting the other person know that he didn't want to be in a relationship, so he was out doing his thing. She got a hold of his phone, and after that, it was a wrap. Brent thinks that Marcus's ex shouldn't have looked through his phone. Uh, it's his business. <laughs> Brian disagrees. If that phone is available, he'll look through the phone. Brent then calls Brian insecure, and looking through someone's phone displays insecurity. Steve says that we all know what's up. If you go look through the phone, you're going to find something. Brian even calls Brent Goofy ASS because if someone came to you with that information, would you ignore it? Brent doesn't appreciate being called a Goofy ASS and feels that name calling isn't necessary. The room tries to chill as the static starts to build. They tell him, okay, let's not ruin it. We're all having a great evening. Let it go. But Brent keeps going, even calling Brian a little boy, screaming to him to shut the F up. Now Ashley is irritated with Brent. Ashley takes a moment to ask Brian if they could step away and just have a second. Brian says to production that Brent has a complex and that's all on him. While Ashley is talking to Brian, Brent continues to tell him, bro, shut the F up. 
Ashley clarifies, look, he's talking to me. He's not talking to you anymore. And he keeps going. Brent says, I don't care. I can still hear him. Take his butt somewhere in another room somewhere. Brent says to production that after Brian called me a goofy ASS, there was no turning back. And I couldn't agree to disagree. It's the first bit of static in the one mansion. Who knew that there would be so much drama after such a great evening? On top of that, tomorrow one guy and one woman will be eliminated. Stay tuned for episode 8.